everyone welcome back to Cotto Verdi my name is Annette and today is a big day because I'm planting my tulip pots and the reason I call them my tulip pots is because I bought them specifically so I could make this display of tulips every spring but actually what happens is I use them in the summer for dahlias and just as patio pots anyway but at this time of year they're empty and I fill them with tulips now what I do is I put a separate variety into each pot so I don't do any layering um, or lasagna method. It's literally just one variety into each pot. And I just really like it that way so that, you know, each one is flowering at a specific time and the colors aren't quite so jumbled, but I can sort of arrange the colors how I like them by just arranging the pots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the different varieties that I'm planting today. And I've got 14 different varieties. Each pod is going to be different, as I said, and then I'm going to show you how I plant them, which really isn't difficult. And there's still time to plant tulips. It's the end of November and you can plant tulips if you really need to into January. But November, December is a really good time to get them in the ground. And here in the UK, it's getting cooler from now on. In fact, much cooler. Um, I'm end of November out in the garden in just short sleeves and a cardigan, which is amazing and would never normally happen. And it's really nice to be planting tulips when it's not too cold. Um, um, but anyway, you've definitely got time to get some tulips and there's some great sales on at the moment. So if you haven't planted any, I encourage you to bag yourself a bargain and get some tulips either into some pots or into the ground. And, you know, tulips work very well in the ground just as well as they do in pots but I like to put mine in pots because I don't tend to keep them from one year to the next well what I do is I put them into my garden and sometimes they'll flower again and sometimes they won't but that's just the way with tulips but also I like to have something pretty on the patio so I'm going to go through the tulips that I'm going to put in these pots so I'm putting tulip pink star I'm putting tulip apricot impression Putting tulip trick. I'm putting tulip burgundy lace. I'm putting tulip temple of beauty. I'm putting tulip fantasy. Tulip Louvre. Pink vision. Amazing Parrot, Manola, Pink Sound, La Belle Epoque, El Nino, one of my favourites, Silk Road, and Lady Van Eric. So I've just realized I've got 15 varieties on 14 pots. So I'm going to have to find another pot. It's not gonna match, or I'll put one of the varieties into a bed close by. That's another solution. So now I'm going to plant up the pots. And what I do is I put some crocs in the bottom of the pots. And um, that's only because there's a hole in the bottom and I don't want all the compost to fall out. So what I tend to do is put a small crock um, with a, a, another crock balanced on top and then water can just come through the gap and come out of the pot that way and it, if you just put one crock in then it might block the hole so I balance the bigger crock onto little crocks and that way water's got a chance to escape. The other good thing is that these are terracotta pots so they're porous so in fact they will let some of the moisture out and the reason I'm talking about moisture and um, you know making sure that there's a way for the moisture to come out of the pot is because tulips really don't want to be sitting in heavy claggy soil um, and they don't want to get waterlogged because they'll just rot and then you just won't have any tulips and that'll be very disappointing. So once I put my crocs in, then I'm going to put homemade compost in the bottom. Now the reason I'm putting homemade compost in the bottom is because it's free and I've made it myself and I'm not going to put homemade compost in the whole of the pot for, for two reasons. So the first reason is because you don't quite know whether it's got all the nutrients that the bulbs require because you've made it yourself and it's not like balanced in the way that shop bought compost is. But the other reason is because your compost is from your garden, there may be weed seeds in it. You know, the wind could have carried weed seeds into your compost bin or you may have put weeds in there by mistake. And if those weeds germinate, they'll be 
fighting with the tulips or the tulips will be fighting with the weeds and you really don't want to have to be weeding the pots so that's why I put homemade compost on the bottom and then I put short book compost on the top so I'm going to put the homemade compost in the bottom of the pot and I have not sieved my homemade compost I mean it's got bits of pot debris in there but you can see that it's just a really lovely texture nice and crumbly now that I've added the homemade compost, what I also like to do is sprinkle some bulb starter in there. Now you absolutely don't have to do this, but I have found it to be very useful over the years and call it superstition, I don't know, <laughs> I just think if I don't sprinkle it then I won't get as good a display, so I always sprinkle a little bit of bulb starter. So that's all I do. But just in case you haven't planted tulips before, um, it's always pointy side up. So you plant it with the pointy side facing up. And also tulips like to be um, at least three times their depth in deep. So if you're not sure, just, you know, lean them up against the side of your container and just make sure that they're going to be at least three times their depth. And I don't know if you can see that, but that's what I'm going to do. So, and this is fine because actually what I'm going to do is push them in a little bit and I'm going to plant them really closely together because I want to get at least 25 into each pot and I normally, these come in, you know, bags of 25 so I want to get the entire bag into this pot obviously it depends on the size of your bulb but what I'm doing is I'm planting them almost touching but not quite oh that one's a bit soft so I'm not planting that one because it is not healthy so there's only be 24 in this pot but no one will notice it's not like we're going to stand there and count so definitely don't plant mouldy bulbs because that would just spread to your other bulbs. Now that I've planted the bulbs, I'm just going to fill up with short-bought compost. Now that I've filled my pot with compost um, and I use the Melcourt Silver Grow peat free compost. I think it's really important to use peat free if you can but I realise it's more costly so if you can't um, then you know obviously just use any shop bought compost um, but once I've done this I'm now going to cover it with grit. The grit's going to do two things hopefully it's going to um, deter the pesky squirrels and other things that like to dig up my tulip bulbs but also it's going to be a layer that will prevent weed seeds germinating hopefully. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is cover each pot with some chicken wire because I've also found that that is a really good deterrent against squirrels and mice and other things foxes that like to badgers definitely that like to eat my tulips so if you have that sort of problem then um, try and get hold of some chicken wire I found that plastic netting just doesn't do the job they'll nibble through that but the chicken wire because it's metal I guess it's just it's a much better preventative measure This is just ordinary horticultural grit that I'm using here, um, but I, um, I've seen that you can get hold of um, some like crushed up shells. You could use anything really. I have used moss in the past, but I'm not going to this year. And then what I'm going to do is label my pots. Um, obviously you don't need to label your pots if you haven't got very many varieties or you don't mind not knowing what they are, but I like to know, sometimes I can't remember because I've got a lot of varieties, so I like to know what each one is, so I label my pots. So I'm going to carry on filling the remaining 13 pots. I think I found actually that I've got 15 varieties of tulips, so I will put some other tulips in a different pot and probably use those for cutting rather than for display purposes, unless I can find something pretty. Um, but anyway, that's about it for today. I hope that you found this useful and interesting. You've definitely got time to get some tulips if you haven't gotten any yet. So, you know, rush out to the shops. If you've got a few pennies to spare, they really are bargain prices now because most people have bought their tulips and there are some really lovely varieties still out there. And if you're curious to see what the tulips are going to look like in the spring, then do subscribe to my channel. Just hit the button below that says subscribe and then you'll be notified when I post a video in the spring showing you how wonderful they are. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.